uh, to call the special school committee meeting of January 14th, 2021 to order. Um, it is 5.02 p.m. Could we please start with attendance? Uh, Mrs. Mayhew. Ramon Diaz. Here. Diane Mayhew here. Bo Sullivan. Here. Cindy Sullivan. Here. Heather Sullivan. Here. Tim O'Connor. Here. And Chairman Hummison. Here. Okay, if you could join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, of, the United America, States of, America, of America, for which it stands, for which it stands one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. For all. Thank you. Uh, the first item on the agenda is public participation, excluding personnel. Um, I, I know we've gotten uh, emails and calls. Do we have any that we need to list tonight? We do. Um, with the constraints of time this evening, I have been asked to summarize the eight public participation emails sent to us. As always, the full text of emails will be put into the minutes and I will acknowledge those who have sent them. I think in we summary, should read the I think we should read the kids' emails. I don't think we should not. Well, if you're gonna read the kids, you gotta read them all. Whatever. Well, you can't do half. Let's go forward, Miss Mayhew. In summary, we are asked to look at our winter sports programs as separate. Ski teams and the girls hockey team are at the forefront of these emails. All agree that they want all winter sports to happen, but take exception that these two are looked at separately. Emotional well-being and finding some normalcy sports brings to our children's lives is highly expressed. Skiing and hockey are expressed to be low risk environments. MIAA and their strict protocols were reiterated as well as how the sports that take place indoors are bringing more risk of contacting COVID. All thanked us for time and consideration in this matter. From Bonnie Gauthier, 327 River Road, South Hadley, Mass. Samantha Scanlon, 38 Jesse Lane, Westfield, Mass. William Moore Fauché III, 51 Mockingbird Lane, Westfield, Mass. Anna Chrysanthopoulos. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> 35 Whispering Wind Road, Westfield, Mass. Abigail Bowser, 81 Alexander Place, Westfield, Mass. Lindsay Delane, 81. Scenic Road, Westfield, Mass., and also Mackenzie Ray, 16 Sunrise Terrace, Westfield, Mass. Thank you, Ms. Mayhew. I think it's important to say that we, we all as school committee members have received uh, beyond public participation, uh, contact from a number of parents and a number of students, and we appreciate um, their support of uh, and uh, their concern, uh, concerns that they've raised. And uh, I hope that we're able to reach common ground with everything, but we appreciate everybody's, um, everybody's input uh, to, to some um, challenging uh, topics. Thank you. Bo, did you have a, a comment or? Yeah, I just, I just want to back up what, what Mr. O'Connor just said, because obviously there was more uh, reach out and participation from parents and students uh, than just the names that, that uh, Mrs. Mayhew just read. So I, I would say keep those coming. Um, uh, it, it makes this job uh, easier, I would say, when there's more participation in things. So I appreciate everybody who reached out, who called, who faxed, or who texted, and, and the emails also. So um, I would say keep it coming. Uh, this, this whole thing works better no matter what the topic is with public participation. I agree. Other comments? I was just saying, well stated, Bo. I really appreciate that. 
Thanks. My sentiments exactly. Well, then I'm going to say um, that I think that we should have read the emails. There was only eight of them. And if we want public participation, we need to continue with the way that we were doing it and not pick and choose when we're going to do it. I understand the time constraints, but I don't think it's right that we're not reading the emails. But we'll move we on. May, we may not get to vote, Ms. Sullivan, at the end of the night. All right, then let's move on now to the uh, item number two, Westville Public Schools back to school plan. We're going to speak about the back to school plan and also athletics. But first, um, Superintendent Zaporowski, did you want to speak or did you want to? Yes, um, thank you. So um, originally when we had voted or not, or when we had decided to close, um, at that point we had seen uh, some increases in cases in our schools. We were up to 87 at that point. As of today, uh, and, and coming back from um, the winter recess or winter break, we're now up to 151 cases uh, in the schools. And again, these have been all reported while we're remote. So um, they weren't contracted from the schools. I think that's important to note. I just wanted to keep you updated as to where we are. Last week we had 59 new cases and this week we've had 15. So our number has gone down. Um, but I also wanna point out, and, and Joe is on the call, which is great, um, but that we um, as a city had 247 cases last week, which is an uptick certainly from the 173 the week before. Um, I did talk with um, Director Rouse as well um, in terms of what we could do, you know, would it make sense to bring everybody back on Tuesday? And um, I'm going to let him speak to that as to why that probably isn't a great idea. But we did have a conversation about um, students at Westfield Technical Academy and the shops coming back um, and then our high needs students uh, and then possibly uh, preschool. Um, but to that, I'm going to let Joe speak to where we are as the community and, and about his recommendations. Joe? Yes, good evening. Thank you. Um, so uh, everything you said is absolutely correct. We, uh, we are at, again, this week with a uh, all-time high number of new cases. And as we've said all along before, that, that's not the beat-all to end-all to make this decision um, in, a normal, in a normal situation. This is abnormal now. We're, we're, we're setting records every week now. Um, our numbers haven't gone down in a long time. So when we get into that again community spread and it's starting to get worse or uh until we start to get that resolved until we start to see those numbers come down we can obviously and everybody i'm sure can agree that it's only a matter of time um before it has a great impact on the public schools and and the superintendent spoke to the numbers that that you have so there is obviously cases and students um so you know, not, not projecting right now that in the very near future, it's going to get any better as far as what's out there. Um, the last thing we want to do, or uh, I, I think the last thing anybody wants is to have to assemble and go back and then immediately close again. And that's a very real reality from where I sit right now and in the information that I'm looking at. So I think too, and I feel like a broken record when I say this, but the next two weeks is critical and I've said it before. I don't know why it always happens that we have a phone call whenever we're at a crossroads where the next two weeks is gonna be critical, but I feel like I just keep saying that, but it's a reality. And the reason is because, you know, we, we could just, we could reconvene in another week and see where we're at. Um, I still wouldn't be comfortable in making any recommendation different than what I would make tonight which would be we need two weeks. That's the standard of data, uh, the period of time where that seems to be the minimum representative period of time. So a week's not long enough because we've had this happen where our numbers have gone down on any given week um, because there were laboratory glitches. There was uh, just through the whole infrastructure, the system broke down for some reason, the software didn't work or whatever. And so we go down in numbers, but that's not the reality. So when you get a better picture over a two week period, you can obviously tell what's trending, uh, better representative models that you can look at to make a really good decision. And right now, everything I'm looking at is saying, again, 
This is the next two weeks are critical. We got to get through the exponential uh, rebound of the uh, holiday gatherings, which is, I believe, why the numbers are what they are. And once that resolves itself, which will be two weeks, um, I, I don't see any reason unless there's some other monumental event that happens, a super spreader event or some major cluster, um, that we wouldn't be able to get back to the hybrid on February 1st. I would recommend that and uh, go back to the superintendent's plan of the phase 1B, which we did in the beginning was <clears throat> to bring back the, uh, the, the Tech Academy <clears throat> uh, hands-on shop kids and also the, uh, the high needs. And I can't speak to, you know, the other specifics about the, the uh, preschool or, you know, that's your guys' thoughts. But um, we, we just need this time right now. And I know, you know, we, we keep see, it seems like we keep putting it off and putting it off. But I guarantee you when I feel like the time is right and it, and, and it, it may even be, you know, a little bit of a Hail Mary at some point and say, you know, we just got to we got to try this. We got to get, the, you know, the, if it backfires on us, it will. But right now I can most certainly say it will. And so, um, and, and so that would be my recommendation is to um, have the 1D plan go back into effect and then hold off on the full hybrid model until February 1st. Mr. O'Connor, Tim. Joe, thank you, um, you know, for all the work that you're doing. I know you've got some long days and we appreciate you taking the time out to, to spend with us and, and provide guidance and direction. Um, a couple questions. One is, can you give us an indication now of, of the group of um, kind of positive rates that you're seeing? In other words, um, is it in a certain age group population? Is it spread out from you know young to old? Or is there anything more unique that you've seen in, in the month of January, for example, that you hadn't seen as a pattern or a trend uh, before now? Yeah, it's it's um it's actually something we have seen recently, um, say within the past month or two, um, but it has actually been exaggerated lately in, in, in the last week or two, where the demographics that we're seeing in the age categories are really, you know, people between the ages of 25 and 65, for example, uh, and 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 I probably have said for people that you know they're they're working, uh, we see a lot of a lot of the uh, exposures happening in the workplace. So we're trying to deal with that right now and educate the larger employers in the city about how to be more careful. And, um, and so with that then goes the, you know, the obvious connection with those age groups of people potentially having kids uh, at home too, which is another factor of one of the models that, that says, you know, kind of beware a little bit. So it's not the seniors. I mean, they, they have learned their lesson. They have been very good. They went through this horribly awful first round back in the spring, and they're scared, and they and you know they're chomping at the bit to get the vaccine too. Don't blame them. Um, we are not seeing a heart still a high trend in the school age kids in comparison to the rest. So, if you wanted to put a percentage to it, I would say probably 85% of the cases that we see are uh, working age adults, and um, and then everything else is scattered just pretty equally. Okay. Thank you. Part two is, is this, and I want to preface my question by saying that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a big supporter of trying to get as many students and, and administrators and teachers and uh, others back into the schools as, as quickly and as safely as we can. Um, but if we were to compare uh, this coming Monday, January 19th, to our first phase in back at the beginning of October, it, it would seem to me that the numbers back in October were extremely lower than they are today. I don't know if that's a fair assessment or not, but does that change, you know, when comparing the kind of the start dates from phase one back in uh, the fall of 2020 to this coming Monday, did that have any impact on, on your direction um, or how are you thinking about that? So we, we kind of went into a, a red alert back then and, and using a lot of information of the overall number of cases and the community spread. And we really, we really were concerned because at that time, again, the numbers kept uh, escalating and we, it wasn't under control. 
the, the, it's a similar situation now, except for the fact that numbers are extremely higher than they were then. So, um, but that's a lot of other factors. That's a lot more people that are getting tested. Um, and again, a lot more, um, a lot more spread. I think we are very artificially high right now because of gatherings. Um, and, and that will, that will work itself out. And then, um, but yeah, it's, it's an equivalent, all other things being equal, even though the numbers of cases back then might have been a, a little bit lower, the severity of the impact to the community is the same as it is now. Thank you. And, and just a final statement, not a question. You know, when, when we are asked to consider our phasing approaches, I think our first reaction is, you know, uh, how are the students going to do getting in and, and are they ready and are they going to be safe? We have to consider the teachers, we have to consider the faculty, the administrators, custodial, um, uh, the kitchen staff, and everybody, everybody in the school system. That's what we're, I, I think, what we've got to really look at when we're making this decision. So just want to make that, uh, make that point clear. Thank you. Yeah, if, if I could just, I want to follow up real quick on that. You're absolutely right. And I don't mean to exclude the staff um, and, the, and the teachers and, and everybody else. Um, I, I can definitively say, and I've said it before, uh, I'm comfortable with making the statement right now that if you go back to the hybrid model with in-person learning on the 19th, I, I, I fear for the ability to have a safe work environment. So that's just another two cents I'll throw in. Thanks. And, and part of that group is the nursing staff as well and who uh, works tirelessly. So th thank you, Joe. Yep. Bo? Yeah, I just, a couple things. I just want to make sure that I'm clear on this um, with what we're calling 1B, what, what Mr. O'Connor said back in October, would be the shop kids and the special ed. And, and Stefan, I'm assuming you would include all of, of the special ed students, quote unquote, that would be going back. My, my question is, what about um, kindergarten and preschool? Is that two, the, the, the Fort Meadow, is that too much to bring back now? Is is that too many people in a school? Is Joe, Joe not happy with that one or is that really up to us? So we were looking at um, bringing back what we call cohort E and I wanna have Denise and Deb explain what that is, if you're all right. Deb, Denise, you, you there? Hi, yes, I'm there. Um, so cohort E, for the English learners are the beginner and foundational English learners who we look at their access scores and they score between a level of zero to 3.2 out of the, it's six points they could possibly, or six is the highest score. Those students usually require um, ESL with the teacher um, for anywhere from 135 minutes to 90 minutes a day. So our cohort E kids, which will be the daily students that we would like to be are part of that phase um, when, if we return. The others that are that 3.2 or higher, we call them transitional students, and they usually have enough language proficiency to function in a general ed classroom, and the ESL teacher usually pushes into the literacy block with the classroom teacher, and so they're able to, um, you know, be able to function in a classroom and be fairly successful. And these are the recommendations that DES provided of those. And to um, speak to the special education students, um, these are the cohort, these are the students that we considered for everyday students that had been coming in every day. Once again, those were the children that were identified early on through the de Department of Ed. These are kids that are in our programs um, so the kids who are in the Autism Spectrum Disorder Program, Essential Learning Skills, RISE, Quest, um, Language Learning Disabilities, um, East Mountain Transition Program. Um, so basically all students that um, were considered high needs that were daily prior to us um, shutting down for the Christmas vacation. Um, the students who are on IEPs that had been going on in the hybrid model, students who may receive some related services or may receive some academic support, um, they would not be included in this group. These are the high needs um, according to the Department of Ed. 
So when we say cohort E, cohort E basically means the students that had been coming in every day um, from the beginning. So thank you both. Yeah. And Bo, to follow up, so you were asked about kindergarten and pre-K. Yeah. Um, you know, our case, our cases from the pre-K are, are very low. Um, but I wonder if, you know, you know, I think kindergarten might be a little bit too much. I think that'd be something we'd revisit for the February 1st meeting uh, or the meeting or the Thursday before that, um, the 28th. Mm -hmm. I have reserved uh, the, both the 21st and the 28th in case we want to meet at five to six on Thursday. And I do like Thursdays because we get the number from the city the night before. Um, so it lets us know about community spread. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I'm sure, listen, we want all the kids back. I guess that's why I'm stumbling. We want everybody back, but I don't want to rush it at the same time. I don't want to be too cautious. I think you know exactly what I'm feeling because I think you are all feeling it too. Joe, is that, does, does that matter to you about kindergarten and pre-K? Um, you, you know, I, I was thinking about that before, and I think that, no, it really, it, it doesn't matter to me because I, I don't know the specifics necessarily. I would default. Um, I, I think you guys really need to make that decision, and one way or the other, I'm fine with that. Okay. I, I will say that Pam has to uh, prepare transportation. Sorry, didn't know. That was my next question. Man. I, I always ask right. her. I don't know if she's here tonight, but oh, maybe I do see her. Um, yeah, if, she's here. If we, if we did go kindergarten and pre-K, is she okay with that? I'm okay with it. Um, it'd be a little bit more difficult um, bringing in uh, kindergarten kids only, um, but I'll do whatever. No, I think if we do kindergarten, I think we'd have to do pre-K. I mean, I don't think there's any yeah, reason. Pre -K is, yeah, pre-K is is fine because they're, the pre-K kids that I transport are on the minivans. Okay. Those would be only students that are on IEPs. Okay. Okay. All right, Heather, are you still interested in speaking? <laughs> I saw your hand go right ahead. Okay, so... If, and I think you answered this, but I just want to clarify the the cohort E is the same. It's the same body of students that we started the year with. Am I right? Yes, it is. Okay, so we're just it. We're just it's going to kind of just go back to the way we did in the beginning, um, because cohort E was in for like three weeks, and then we started doing the, the hybrid. Correct. Correct, cohort E, um, they were all the kids that were cohort E were the children that were there prior to the hybrid model. Yep. So we're just kind of like doing the exact, we're just yep. starting from scratch. Same for the EL. Yep, we're just going yeah, back that's in our model to the earlier phase. Right, because when you were saying, Denise, about the ESL or the ELL, that's, they were in that phase and that, and I remember you talking about their, um, those, their uh, scores. Score. Yes. So their access we're, we're scores. Just, so. We're just stepping back in our phases. So the same students will be in those phases. When's the next access testing, March? Um, actually, they've expanded the window from January through May this year. So we have a plan, a district plan to test students as they're entering and coming into the buildings, depending on the phases. So if we have our cohort E kids back, we'll start testing those students with access. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. So we can start, we might even be able to you know, flip after, if their um, if their access scores have risen, they can our, come out of that. Our they goal, come out of that goal is to test all the children that you know we can. And if we get into the hybrid mode, we'll test the kids on their hybrid week and stuff. That's our plan. Right, but I'm saying yeah, that's what I'm saying. But it, that means that if they if they test that, I forget the numbers. I have it at home, but they can they can if they test out and leave cohort E. Um, no, they won't leave cohort okay. E because we don't usually get, we don't end um, exit students until at the end of the school year. Right, but I didn't know with, with everything that's going on, I didn't know if there was a way, so that's why I was just asking. No, those, the cohort E kids will be the cohort E all, okay. all year. Okay, that, which it makes more sense because it'd be so much scrambling around. Sure. Um, all right, and I, that's all I have right now. Could I just, could I also add one thing? Um, what we also did when we had coat for e come in um, is we also allowed some individually special education testing. 
So if a student who wasn't an E student um, who needed a psychological evaluation, the school psychologist would um, make an appointment for the student to just come in for that testing time and then come back and then go back home. Um, so that might also occur if, if at all possible. Heather? So are you doing your, with that said, are you guys doing your three-year evals and all of those? Yes, as best as okay. we are, yep. Okay. Cindy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just, I guess I wanna say that I would support what's been presented um, in terms of WTA and um, cohort E. And I think maybe we should hold off on um, Fort Meadow and kindergarten until February 1st. Um, I guess I could go either way on that, but I just wanna really quickly say why WTA is so important to go back. And I think all of us know, but um, for the shops, if kids are not in school in certain shops, um, they're not getting their hours for their licenses that they need, which really has big ramifications um, for the future. So every day that they're not in are hours that they're not getting. So I think that that's why we're kind of stressing that. Although I think all of the kids um, should go back and I think we all want them to go back. I, I, I guess I'm comfortable with waiting until, you know, January 28th to kind of decide on that. And I agree putting everybody back at the same time isn't a great way for us to measure what's happening. Um, and, and I guess, I don't know, I could go either way on, on pre-K and kindergarten. Um, depending on what Stefan's recommendation is on that. Um, so I, I guess I just want to say that I would support that and I, I would be happy to make a motion so we can move this forward unless someone else has something else. Uh, I see Ray's hand up. Yeah, I, just, I just wanted to thank Joe um, because we come here, really count on Joe on your expertise. I've said it over and over again. I really appreciate what you bring to the table every single time we're having these conversations and why you think what you do. It adds a lot of insight. I'm a new health expert. I know you are, that's your that's your job. So thanks for just bringing that. I too with Cindy, I think what we're doing and going back is a good idea. And the kindergarten and pre-K, I think um, I'm in the same boat. I could go either way, I could be convinced either way. So thanks, I just say thanks again, Joe. Appreciate it. And can I add a few things before we wrap up? Uh, sure. Just, I do want to caution folks that, you know, as we move forward, um, I've, I've made it, I think I've made you aware that we are having some staffing concerns as well. And I just, those are constant. Um, we have, I mean, a, a regular, a high number of employees right now and work staff really about uh, 12, 14, 18 folks that are either in quarantine or out right now in the district because of COVID. So it could mean that we may have to say a certain program may have to be remote for one day. Um, and I just want to put that out there if the staff aren't able to come in and we don't have a um, an assortment of substitutes that are able to fill in for some of these specialty courses too. So in some cases, the the uh, someone will cover the class, but and there'll be work assigned, but I just wanted to put that out there because I know some parents have expressed frustration, but when we have staff out and in the circumstances we're in, there's not a whole lot that we can do. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that while we are waiting until the next piece, um, it is also my recommendation that uh, staff have the option to come into work rather than be required because I think it's probably helpful to keep the numbers of staff or people in our buildings down um, just because I, I, I think it's, it's, it's kind of smart. So um, the other thing is, is I know Joanne wanted to speak in regard to the pre-K and I, I saw her hand up. I don't know if, if yeah. you're going to call on her. Well, yes. wait, you gotta be called on by the mayor. <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to bring up a couple of things with pre-K. Um, just uh, number one is back in the fall, uh, we had a half an hour of learning time outside. Right now with uh, the temperatures the way they are and the weather the way it is, we can't, um, half an hour is a long time for three-year-olds to be outside. Um, and bundling and unbundling takes a lot of time. So that's a consideration. The other thing is, is one fear that I have is 
parents um, may choose to keep their children home because they're nervous. And <clears throat> those children will miss out on remote learning because I can't just pile all of those children into our three remote classrooms because that's not going to work. Um, you can't have too many kids in remote classes. So that would mean we'd have less kids in school and teachers in front of them, but children who are at home won't have any teachers to teach them. Um, and so those are just a couple of things that are on my mind. The other thing is, is there's a whole lot of stuff that goes with teaching. Um, so my teachers literally have to move back in. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, if we were to come back and then have to go back remote again, it's literally moving boxes of stuff back to school and then um, back home again. So setting up their spaces to teach. So those are just some, so I, I do have some concerns. Honestly, I kind of, as much as I love having all of the children there, I do have some concerns about bringing everybody back, all staff and students right now. Thank you. Let me see. Uh, Heather, I'm sorry, Cindy. Um, thank you. Um, I so I'm fine with not having um, preschool and kindergarten come back if there's not like a, a huge like consensus on it. And um, thank you, Joanne, for for stating that. That's really important. And um, I agree with Stefan that we should give the uh, teachers a option to come in. I know there's there's some teachers who want to, that that's kind of like their office, their classroom, it makes it easier for them to do remote learning, um, but giving them an option to, so that we do have less people in the building. I think that I think that's a reasonable uh, request. And that's it, so you can make, I don't know who can. I see Heather's hand up, and then we should move to a motion because it's uh, 534. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. Um, I think that it's important that you spoke if we have, if we don't put um, pre-K in, I'm guessing we don't do kindergarten or, I don't know, I don't know about that. I don't that. think we do kindergarten again until, I think we start with the, um, the shop kids okay. and the uh, cohort E kids. And then on, but we meet on January 28th to decide on February 1st, what else we can bring back. I, Notice I I'm saying what else good. we can bring back, I'm being positive. Okay, and Stephen, I think it's important that you addressed the issue of teachers being out and the and the issue with, um, I know that a lot of people have been asking, why don't we get notices? I mean, there's a, there's a thing called HIPAA and people can't um, necessarily do that, uh, you know, and make an announcement. We do close schools, not the entire district, but one at a time when we have issues to that. So I'm, I'm glad you spoke of that because I would have forgotten. Um, but yeah, I'm ready if we want to make a motion because I feel like we're all on the same page. All right, let me give it a shot. Then? I'd like to make a motion to bring Westfield Technical Academy shops, special ed programs, all subgroups back to school on January 19th, 2021. Second. So moved. Motion second. made second. Further discussion? Okay, seeing none, let's move to a roll call, please. Mrs. Mayhew. Ramon Diaz. Yes. Diane Mayhew, yes. Bo Sullivan. Yes. Cindy Sullivan. Yes. Heather Sullivan. Yes. Tim O'Connor. Yes. And Mayor Hummison. Yes. And the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you for the discussion, everybody. Uh, next athletics so we had talked about that earlier we had uh per, you know as we discussed at the last meeting ryan and i had put in some uh additional safeguards for tryouts to occur and i did ask ryan to come to speak briefly ryan because we have 24 minutes to go <laughs> am i up can i go yes you're you are up. all right i'll try to get this done quickly but thank you for just giving me some time to speak um, I just want to start by throwing out some participation numbers. Uh, at Westfield Tech, we have 28 kids participating in winter athletics. At Westfield High, we have 123. 
Um, our ski team is combined between both schools and there's 13 kids there. Um, and we have 13 students out uh, participating with cooperative uh, teams. So this brings us to 177 total athletes, which is about 10 and a half percent of the combined schools populations. So what have we been doing this week? You know, we've been doing those modified tryouts like we talked about, splitting up in groups with the aim to keep contact down. Um, we've been, again, maintaining our COVID-19 safe practices, taking strict attendance, getting kids assurance that they did their pre-screening checks, masks on, hand sanitizer stations, sanitizing equipment, deep cleans at the end of night, et cetera. So I guess what I'd like to say is how am I viewing athletics purpose in getting our kids through this pandemic? You know, whenever, whenever I face like a decision, I always kind of lean on uh, what's the mission? You know, as an educator, my mission's always been, you know, what is best for kids? Little cliche, but I kind of think it's appropriate. Um, so what do I think? I think it's best for that they play. And, and here are some reasons. Um, you know, we're trying to provide structure and supervision to that sector of students. You know, we're trying to provide a safe outlet for them during these difficult times. And we're giving them constant reminders to do the right thing. They know if they make poor decisions outside of athletics, contract COVID-19, this will most likely result in the entire team getting shut down. You know, another point I'd like to make is that, that you know, athletics helping academics. I believe that they're co-curricular and that they help each other. Uh, you know, just one quick example from last night, I'm, I'm watching one of our basketball coaches talking to a kid who, who's been failing all his classes this year. You know, he's not eligible for the team, but he's, he could still participate. You know, the coach is talking to him. He's like, listen, we're here to help you. You know, we could set you up with a tutor, you know, but you have to know academics are important. You know, and that idea of, uh, the idea of stressing that to him, you know, I think is, is crucial. You know, and I'd like to bet that that kid did better in school today than he did yesterday. No, just a bet. Um, so I know you probably want to know what are other schools doing? And I, and I just want to say it's varied. You know, schools are competing with the modifications in place. I'd say the majority of schools are competing in our PVIC. You know, uh, some of those schools, I would say a handful are competing with limited or no spectators. Um, a few schools are, are kind of in the postponement phase right now. Um, and a few schools are doing just kind of in-house intramural type things, practice only. Um, and then there are a few schools that are not participating at all. Just to kind of give you some quick uh, examples here, if we talk about Westfield High School's basketball group, you know, we have Agawam, Holyoke, Pope Francis, West Springfield, and Westfield. So Agawam is in participating, Holyoke's in a postponement phase, Pope Francis is in, uh, and West Springfield is in. If we're talking about Westfield Tech, we have uh, Gateway has postponed right now, they're hoping to start Tuesday, but they're not sure who they're going to allow to play. Uh, Pioneer Valley Christian is in. Um, Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion School is allowing their kids to play. We have Smith Volk and Southwick are waiting on school committee approval, and St. Mary's is in. So just to kind of give you a brief, you know, brief picture of what other schools are doing. You know, I'd like to kind of offer up four options um, for you guys to consider. Um, so the first option would be, let's continue with winter athletics as we uh, set forth uh, following the EEA guidelines along with the MIA modifications. Um, you know, the second one I would, I would ask us to consider is, you know, let's continue with athletics, uh, follow the EEA and MIA modifications, but consider limiting or eliminating spectators. The third one I, I would say is, you know, if those first two we're not comfortable with, but let's postpone our season for two weeks, but allow for in-house participation. The fourth one I would say is, you know, let's postpone our season for two weeks and then revisit at one of the next school opportunities for school committee meetings. You know? So just kind of wanted to outline four options for you guys to consider, um, but I'm welcome to discussing anything else that you might feel are appropriate. I'm also here to answer any questions. Thank you, Ryan. Questions for Ryan. Ray. Go right ahead. Ryan, um, can you briefly um, explain like some of the things that we got from some of the parents that have called in or the, the differences in each sport? Like, can you, is there one or two or three sports that you'd say it'd be fine for these or these sports would be better off? They're not going to have issues because like, we got a lot of 
the ski team and the one that are outdoors, right? As opposed to the ones that are indoors. So did you have any um, thoughts on the, what that would be like? And I'd also I'd like to ask uh, Joe the same question. If you guys could both kind of just let us know what do you think about the different sports and how they should be handled. Uh, I guess I could go first. Um, obviously, I would say skiing is is the the most safe, um, and then I would probably lean on swimming. Uh, well, skiing is the only non high risk sport. Um, everything else is what EEA considers as a higher risk. Um, so I would say skiing is is certainly the safest. And if you had to you know push me in one position or not, I'd go swimming, and then hockey and basketball. Joe, can you um, can you? Uh, yeah, I, I I'll be real quick. I'll be real quick, and 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 um, and forgive my attempt at a moment of levity. But you know, sometimes if we don't laugh, we're all going to go crazy. And I'll say this, in, and I could have said this in a different way, but I have been batting this around, um, keeping my eye on the ball. This is far from a slam dunk decision. We need, and par for the course for me to say this is all risky. Uh, thought we might have to throw in the towel but I think I can maybe run some interference so we'll be able to get this across the goal line last thing we want to do is to have to punt that's nice your job. cue to laugh it's your cue to laugh but you don't have to it's all right I've been in front of tougher crowds okay so what that all means is really seriously and this isn't a laughing matter it's a very serious situation and I've thought about it immensely um, Ryan, you're right on the ball, and I like your third option. I think what we need to do here is um, proceed cautiously, and I can't give you any reason right now to say not to, especially without school being in session. If school is in session, I'd be a little bit more nervous about a potential spread uh, 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 or an event of exposure. But I think what we need to do is is maybe just monitor this and you know, let me let me run that interference. I see the numbers. I see the information come in. I want to be able to say, and sometimes the schools find out before we do. Sometimes we find out before the schools. But I think that if we just really closely monitor the, the cases and keep an eye on that, if we start to see that there's a problem, we can identify that. We can shut it down if we need to. But to pre preemptively do that without school being in session, I think would be um, you know, a little bit, a little bit harsh, uh, although that was my knee jerk reaction. But the more I think about it and the more parents that I talk to, um, it, it, it becomes pretty evident that I, I think that, you know, we, we have good people that are in charge of this and we can trust they're going to do the right thing. It is probably a more controlled environment than just letting, you know, the kids go and fend for themselves out in the world and do whatever they want because they are being encouraged to be careful. So I think that I, I think that I'm comfortable with proceeding with uh, a limited type of uh, athletics program, um, but certainly for us to monitor and and refer back to you guys if we see that there may be a problem, and then if we have to pull the plug, we'll pull the plug. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Did he say Mr. or Miss? <laughs> well, mine, mine's real specific. Um, can we even let skiing go and do their season as it is set up by the MIA and your PBIAC? Or do we have to do all the sports under the same umbrella? You know, I've kind of been saying this, and it's holding true that almost all rules are kind of thrown out at this point. Whatever we feel is comfortable for Westfield, we'll be able to do. Yeah, because I, I got to admit, and I will admit I've gotten the most calls on skiing. I think I agree. Um, back comparing that one to a fall, which I think is the only sport you can compare to the fall because it's outside. Yeah. Um, the lodges are closed. The only question I had was buses to and from the mountain with – You've got a to you just said a total of 13. That's boys and girls. Correct. So those 13 could theoretically go on one bus, correct? Yes. All right. Okay. Thanks. Other questions? Uh, 
<laughs> Miss Sullivan. <laughs> Okay, so mine was the same. Now, as well. Which Miss oh. Sullivan? Now there's two. Uh, <laughs> um, First name. Uh, oh, go ahead, Heather. <laughs> then Cindy. Oh, sorry. Um, mine was the same as Bo's, but is the is the swimming something else or I, I, I the, the or the hockey because they're wearing masks. Uh, well, not the swimming, but the hockey. But I mean, if we can just pick it, if we can cherry pick like that, I want to go with the safest ones. And I, like you said, Bo, I feel like skiing is like a no-brainer. Why couldn't we just start that one? Does that mean, what would you say about hockey or swimming? Uh, would that um, be a number three option as well? Are you referring to um, starting some sports right now and then postponing others? Yes. So... I mean, we could do whatever we want. Um, I guess this is my is my answer. Joe, what do you think about if they did swimming and hockey? No, I mean they've got a mask for I don't know. At, at this point, for me, I guess um, I wouldn't break it down to sports specific so much. Um, I I think it's you know we have to do, we just have to monitor it. I think that if we see that. You know, the hockey team, we're starting, we have one case. Obviously, that's going to be a red flag, and we can talk about it and, and shut it down if we need to. But I, I think that, you know, with all of the, the restrictions that are there, and quite honestly, I hadn't read most of them until, because we have our own stuff that we have to look at, until a couple of days ago. And um, it made me feel a little bit more comfortable with that. And again, also because we're not in school. Um, I, 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 I wouldn't hesitate to say, you know, proceed cautiously, maybe not, you know, be running around playing all kinds of games with other cities and towns and stuff, but, um, we'll get there. It's, and we're not too far away from being able to do that, but, um, but I, I you know, I'm okay with what, with whatever you guys decide on that. I'm, I'm going to be looking at it. We're going to, we're going to monitor it and make our, our suggestions even before we have to meet um with with you all so i guess my I'm, feeling is, is i would say yes to that to it without splitting too many things up i mean it might be in our best interest for or not in our best interest but i i don't see a problem with letting skiing seeing how it's 13 one bus outside but agreed can i can i go go right ahead cindy so um, thank you so much, Joe and Ryan. Ryan, I thought that was a great way to present. Um, can, can you talk about the bubbles? Or I can just say, aren't the bubbles set up this time different than they were in the fall where you're playing the same community in the same week so you don't go back to that community? Is that is that accurate with how the the, the games are playing? I'm talking specifically about basketball so with the boys and girls. Some, I would say that's not consistent across the board, to be honest. Uh, okay. There are some, okay. there are some sports that are doing that um, and some leagues that are doing it and some that are not. Okay. Okay. So um, I, I really liked your presentation and I, I like option three and I, I too am for skiing. Um, I think it's outside. There's 13 kids, but when we're talking about 157 kids out of the 5,000 kids in our public schools, I, I see them as small cohorts of kids that are practicing, they're, they're, and they're trying really hard. Um, I think they, they are led by their coaches who want the season, the kids want to be together, and the mental health piece is a huge piece of this for me. That um, I think you're right, Ryan, with the example that you said last night about the, the student that was struggling. Um, they need their coaches and they need each other in a controlled environment. Um, so I really think it's important that we not just pull the plug completely and hope for some matches and some games, um, by the end of February. And, um, I think if we pulled the plug, then, then that's doing more damage than what any of us really want. Um, so I, I think if we break it down, we break it down, but being able to move forward and if parents aren't comfortable with their students playing, I think we refund their money if they don't uh -huh. want to. Um, if they don't like the fact that there potentially couldn't be a basketball game, 
um, and they're just going to continue practicing right now, then we refund their money. Um, but I think we're going to find that a majority of people are going to be okay with us kind of moving forward cautiously. And Joe, I really, I know this has been challenging for you and I know it's a really difficult decision and I, I appreciate you taking all of my questions earlier. We did have a nice conversation because um, I knew we didn't have, you know, 45 minutes for you and I to chat tonight. So um, I just really think we need to make some motions and get and keep things moving um, and kind of see where things lay because we only have like 10 minutes, I think, left. Eight but minutes. <laughs> eight minutes. So I just really think it's important to keep sports moving forward um, as much as we can. And Joe, thank you for agreeing to kind of keep an eye on those numbers and those schools and where those COVID cases happen. And if there's a COVID case, then we follow the protocols and shut the sport down. Right. Mayor, may I say something? Dan, go right ahead, please. Yes, um, I am also thinking that I, I was gonna go one way tonight, but now after listening to everyone, I think it might be best maybe to split these uh, sports up a little bit and taking Ryan's recommendations. I don't, seeing that we're still learning remotely, I don't, I don't want to come off as pro prioritizing athletes over academics right now. Um, and I don't want that but to be the case. I WTA am, has been remote since September. I mean, their academics are remote for the rest of the year. I'd let her finish, Cindy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done. Diane, you're done? Okay. I'm done. Uh, Ray, and then let's let's uh, ask someone well, to make a motion. Jim, you know, Jim we'll, we'll I'm going to have something to say, too. Yeah, Jim, let Jim go first. Go ahead, Ray. Go ahead. Ray, Ray first, uh, then Tim. Okay. I'll, I'll be quick. I just, you know, I'm in the same boat as Diane, except now that I'm hearing Joe and Ryan think that it's okay, I'm going to feel some more continuing and monitoring. That's so all I think both of you've got your hands and heads around what needs to get done, how it needs to get done. You're going to save this again. And as Joe said, let's monitor. Something happens, we pull the trigger and do something else. So thank you both. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Thanks, Ray. Tim. <laughs> yeah, and, and thank you, um, uh, Ryan, for, for the information. It's been very helpful. I think something that you said that stuck with me is that skiing is the only non-risk sport that is labeled as non-risk. And, uh, and I think that at least for, for this particular time period, and it seems to me that th that, that would make sense for me to move forward and, and seeing how that goes. I, and I'm not, I, I don't know as if we wait for February 1st to make other decisions. Uh, the superintendent has reserved um, the next two Thursdays, I want to say the 21st and um, uh, the 29th or, or I'm, I'm, if they are they, yeah. That's right. So I, I would recommend that, I would recommend that we vote tonight on, 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 on sports and, and, but I don't know as if uh, we need to wait until February 1st or that Thursday before February 1st to get together again. I think we owe it. I think we owe it to the student athletes. I think we owe it to the to the coaches and, and and the parents to get together next week and and maybe we make another decision on another level uh, if 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 the numbers are are moving within that week. And I know Joe, two weeks is important, and I get it. But um, you know, at least we can say we we had all the information when we were going to make make that decision. So I, I would I'd, I'd recommend that we move to to make that a vote tonight. Uh, and also move to um, schedule next the two next Thursdays. So we're really, uh, if we can pull in any other any other groups, not only the student athletes, but but the students in terms of getting them back into classrooms, we do that. And my final piece tonight is we talked a lot about sports in our last two meetings. There's a lot of extracurricular activities besides sports that students participate in, and I know that I know that there are arts, uh, there are some virtual arts programs going on. There's some music programs going on, but um, I just want to make sure that that we're not leaving that group out because all of those extracurricular activities are important for all the reasons that people have said tonight about mental health and, and participation and, and being involved. So uh, thank you. Well said. One last. Oh, 
one last thing is we still haven't talked about the co-ops. Um, if, if we're going to hold back hockey and do and do what we're doing this week for next week for hockey, I don't see how we let other kids from Westfield High go play co-ops in other cities. That's just my thought. But I think everything, skiing aside, I think everything else needs to stay, stay the same as it was this week. I was just going to say that I know that I, that swim is when they do their meets, they're, they're doing them virtually, right? So they're, the students are not even mixing with the other teams. They're doing it virtually. I don't know if that changes what people think about swim, but I just wanted to make sure that we understood that it's only Westfield kids at the, at the high school swim, you know, at, at the high school swimming, there's going to be no other teams with them. And if they have no spectators, I don't know if that makes you guys feel better or worse about, about swimming, but it does make it a lot safer. Yeah, I agree. Um, do we have a motion? I'm trying to figure it out. It, How did you you it, is it possible just to maybe ask a few clarifying questions? Real quick. It's got to be right, quick. Right, sorry. You got a minute. <laughs> All right, make a motion then. Go ahead. Yeah. No, that's okay. We, we, listen, we let's let's at least yeah. Go ahead, go ahead and ask some questions. Okay, okay thanks, Peter. Thank you, Pete. Oh, go, Ryan. Okay. Uh, all right, real quick then. So when you're talking about continuing with what we're doing now, you mean we're just going to continue to practice and not participate in any competitions, essentially, correct? Yes, that that's my understanding of it. My understanding is your option three. Okay. okay that you will enforce. Yep. But I, I agree with Mr. O'Connor. Just make that one week instead of two weeks. And we can talk Perfect. again next Thursday night. So the first game isn't until the 21st, which would be that day. We'll postpone anything on the 21st, and then we'll decide the 22nd from there on out. Can I also ask just a quick thing on practice numbers? We've been kind of modifying the practice numbers, but it's getting increasingly difficult to get all the kids in um, under a 10-athlete-per-space uh, ratio. Is that something that we could lean back towards more of the EEA guidelines um, or – is there any discussion on that? I guess my question would be, what are the EA guidelines? What 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 numbers specifically you're looking for? Twenty five per playing surface. Wow, how does that jive with what the governor said? His guidelines regarding ten people in so inside and twenty five outside. Is that is there an exemption for athletics? Yeah, he he specifically says a few. I know he specifically excludes. Uh, um, high school athletics in that. Okay. So 25 in the gym, is that what you're saying? Is that by... I mean... So the gyms are pretty big, right, square yeah. foot-wise? Yeah. I mean, so the really, uh, really, uh, if we could... Most uh, WTA schools will be, the most they have is 16... Um, it's WHS hockey and WHS boys basketball and girls basketball that are, are having a difficult time, you know, meeting this and still kind of having normal practices. What I would say is I, you know, I think that, um, I, you know, you probably have to leave it up to the, the coaching staff if, if they feel as though they can do it safely, but like anything else, you get one case, everything's going to be shut down. Right. I mean, they're, so they're, that's it they're going to have to understand that risk. And if, if they're willing to take that risk and they feel they can have those practices safe, um, then, then I, I think that, um, you know, would have to consider that. Can I say one thing real quick? Um, I know when, when I was doing, um, and I know it's, it's different because it's senior citizens, but when I was doing exercise classes in the summertime, um, the standards were 14 feet apart not six feet apart. So I think I would be more comfortable having more kids if we extended the six foot um, distance. And I think that that would fit, you know, 20 to 25 students, including the athletic coaches um, in a size of, in the, in the square footage, the size of a gym. Like the Westfield High School gym is pretty big. So I think um, if we tried to expand, do better, 
than what the guidelines are. Um, Joe would like to hear that. Doing better than just what the simple guidelines are and keeping them at 14 to 15 feet apart. The kids, when they're doing drills and stuff like that, um, with their masks on, I, I think that, that that's a great goal to reach, to try to strive for. I think we could easily keep it at a 20 max. Like, I think we could definitely do that, no problem. Um, most teams will be split up by then. Just spread them out as much as you can. Yeah. Don't just do the six feet. Tell them to spread out as much as they can. So we're if they get COVID, COVID, they're shut down. <laughs> yeah. Bo? Real quick, Ryan, are the JVs and varsity practicing together? Right now, it's 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 a it's a little bit of a mix, to be honest. Um, we're because we're we're splitting up the program into either two or four different sections, so they're being rotated around. But the JV and varsity will be split up tomorrow. I would say, you know, depending on what we decide tonight. So if if you're splitting those two teams up, there's probably let's just go on the high end. There's probably not more than fifteen kids on a team, correct? I would say twenty for boys hockey is the most. Which is the smaller surface? It would be inside Amelia Park. I mean, we could limit hockey to a little bit more, um, 15, if that's more comfortable. Right. I get that they want at least 12 on the ice because that's two, basically two teams. Yeah. I mean, basketball can be 12 to 15, no problem. I mean, I think that's okay. Um, hockey, it's closer to 15 to 18. I think that's fair. What are we doing for a motion? We just passed six. So. so I'll make the motion. I just want to be clear. If we put let skiing go and do the skiing on the mountain, that's following the MIAA guidelines? Yes. That will be against other teams. So uh, – I'd like to make a motion to continue athletics. Wait. Continuing as as going now with increase in numbers to where coaches can we put this on coaches where coaches thinks it's safe to practice. And Ryan, with collaboration with the athletic director. With collaboration sure. from the athletic director and allow skiing to move forward under MIAA rules. Second. Good. Motion's made and seconded discussion, Ray. Yeah, just what about swimming? Are we gonna, because they're not, their swim meets are gonna be like practices. They're not with another team. They're really, it's like another practice, right? Because they're they're doing it virtually. So the other teams at their school, they're swimming. Westfield's at our school, we're swimming. Are we saying that I don't know if they have a swim meet this week or not. That's a good point. Uh, they, they're on the 21st. There's 21 girls and seven boys for, for swimming and diving. So, But diving doesn't need to be anywhere near the swimmers when they're not diving, right? Right. Outside Correct. the pool. Keeping them separate. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I think that's probably okay. So, there's only seven. So can they're, I vir it? they're definitely virtual, Yes. 100% yes. virtual. I, I, I'm completely 100% comfortable with that. So I'd like to amend the motion to add swimming and but we'll also keep the divers out of the pool area when the swimmers are swimming and the swimmers out of the pool area when the divers are diving. Second. That's fine. All right, how does this work? Do we vote on your amendment first and then on the general uh, general? Yes, you have two votes, yep. Any more discussion? I can't see everybody, so any more discussion? Yeah. Cool community members? Yeah, I, I, I am going to go on record just saying I have a problem leaving this to coaches. I, I, I do too. I 100%. Yeah. So, coaches, what if I, I said, with, uh, sorry. I thought hey, it was with coaches have, and with first. Ryan. Yeah. Right, okay, that's, we're, we're the school committee. We set, we set the policy. Okay. My other problem with this is we didn't want them doing captain's practices and all this stuff. And now it's like, and I like what Cindy said with having them further apart. I just, first of all, I'm uncomfortable talking this long about sports when we have so many other, like to Tim's point earlier, well said. But I, here's the thing, I, you know, for right now, I have a hard time 
increasing the numbers right now. I really do on the court. I'll be a no for that, but I'll be a yes to, you know, postponing and starting them and yes to the, but I don't know what to do about adding more people to a court. We have two motions. We have a motion, an amended that motion. We got to vote on this. But his, um, did his motion have the increased numbers in a practice? No. Yes, it no. Did it vote? Uh, didn't I say it was up to the coaches? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. With, right. direction from this, with, direction. with permission from Ryan, do we trust our athletic director to help them help guide them in those right. numbers? Can I can I offer a phrase? Yes, please, Ryan. Um, continue with a modified trial process. A uh, process. Uh, excuse me. A modified practice schedule under the direction and supervision and approval of the athletic director. All right. I like that. I, I, I guess I like and that. And the superintendent? I, I like that. No, I like the, the, the department heads okay. I like that better than putting the coaches there because I think it put too much on the coaches. Okay, agreed. So that's agreed. the first motion. So do we have an amendment to the amendment? So we have no, to vote on that. Accept that is his language. Okay. All right. Well, we just so, are we prepared to vote on Ray's amendment for and, swimming? Uh, yeah. And yeah. then final. Okay. Any more discussion? Then let's move to vote on Ray's amendment first. Uh, Diane, roll call, please. Uh, Diane Mayhew, yes. Bo Sullivan, yes. Cindy <clears throat> Sullivan, yes. Heather Sullivan. Yes. Ramon Diaz. Yes. Tim O'Connor. Yes. And Mayor Humson. Yes. Okay. The uh, underlying uh, the underlying motion has been amended. Do we have any other further discussion on that? Does anybody need it repeated? We'll just have Ryan do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's move to. <laughs> to a roll call, please, Mrs. May. Diane Mayhew, yes. Bo Sullivan. I, I, I'm sorry, but I really would like to know what Diane wrote down. If she's wrote down exactly what Ryan said, I'm okay, but I just want to make sure that's what we're voting on. The word coaches isn't in there. Okay. So, Ms. May, gotcha. can you read the amendment or read the motion? Um, I'm hoping Mrs. Minicucci has a better understanding of all that wording. Because I've used up most of my space on the first two times you guys were talking. I do have continue, continue as they are in collaboration with the uh, athletic director. Uh, okay. Um, allowing ski uh, under, under the direct, instead of collaboration under the direction of. And approval under, of. Under the direction of and approval of. Okay. Direction of and approval of. Athletic. Okay. Director. Okay. 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 Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Uh, so Bo just said yes. yes. Cindy Sullivan? Absolutely yes. <laughs> Heather Sullivan? Yes. Ramon Diaz? Yes. Tim O'Connor? Yes. And Chairman Hummison? Yes, and that motion passes. Thank you for the discussion and thank you for the input on everybody, we appreciate it. Thanks Ryan very much. Thank you Ryan. Thank Thanks. you. Sorry thank for you keeping Ryan, it. thank you Joe. Thank you Joe, he's, he's probably gone. Thanks guys. <laughs> no, I'm I, here. Got, thank you guys. I know we've got to go to another meeting. Um, yeah. Item number four, <laughs> other items not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to this meeting. Seeing none, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Roll call, please. Bo Sullivan? Yes. Sullivan? Uh, yes. I think she said Cindy. Heather. Did she Heather say Sullivan. Cindy? Yes. Ramon Diaz? Yes, not a Sullivan. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Diane, thank you. Yes. Tim O'Connor? Yes. And Mayor Hummison. Yes. Thank uh, you.